In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brother and sister, fraternal greetings to you from the Carmelite Fathers and warm welcome to Carmel Light, a reflection on the day's readings. It's the 19th of September and we are in the 25th week in ordinary time of the liturgical year and it's Monday today. On 19th of September, we remember Saint Januaris. Who is he? In brief, he was a bishop and martyr. Saint Januaris was born on April 21st, 272 in Italy. He was the Bishop of Benevento during Emperor Diocletian's persecution of Christians. One day, Bishop Januaris went to visit two deacons and two laymen who were imprisoned. During his visit, he was also arrested. Januaris and his companions were flung to the wild bees at the amphitheatre of the town of Pozzoli, but were not attacked. Eventually, they were beheaded about the year 305. It is believed that someone collected the blood of Bishop Januaris when he was martyred and it is kept in Naples as a relic. The blood liquefies and bubbles when it is displayed in the cathedral. To this day, scientists have been unable to explain this miracle. Saint Januaris is the patron saint of blood banks. Saint Januaris, pray for us. Brothers and sisters, now let's pay attention to the Gospel reading of the day. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke chapter 8 verses 16 to 18. At that time, Jesus said to the crowds, No one after lighting a lamp covers it with the jar or puts it under a bed, but puts it on a stand, so that those who enter may see the light. For nothing is hidden that will not be made manifest, nor is anything secret that will not be known and come to light. Take care then how you hear, for to the one who has, more will be given, and from the one who has not, even what he thinks that he has will be taken away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, it's not uncommon to read this passage and see ourselves as the lamp set on a lampstand, 
shining for all to see. But what if we thought about Jesus himself being the brightly shining light? After all, he called himself the light of the world. John chapter 8 verse 12 He is not trying to hide from us or make us jump through all kinds of hoops before we discover him. No, Jesus wants to reveal himself to us. What a hopeful message. Jesus is our light and our salvation. Psalm 27, 1. So what does the light of Christ help us to see? For one thing, it reveals more than an abstract set of facts about God. It shows us God himself, his mercy, his love, his faithfulness. And when God reveals himself, he always touches our hearts, even as he illuminates our minds. We see him a little more clearly and our hearts are moved to follow him a little more closely. For instance, as you read the parable of the prodigal son, you might imagine yourself as the young man coming home to his father's embrace or a moving experience during confession might help you to be more compassionate because you want to share the mercy you have received. God can use instances like these to shine his light into your heart and by shining his light to scatter some of the darkness in it. You might not see clearly all at once. When you enter a dimly lit room, it may take time for your eyes to become accustomed to the lighting. But the longer you are there, the more bright the light appears and the more clearly you can see. Similarly, the more time you spend in God's presence, the more you will perceive all the ways he is making himself known to you. God has been revealing himself since the beginning of time and he is still doing it today. He is continually placing his light on a lampstand because he wants to be known. You can trust his light to shine even in places you might not expect. So open your eyes to see him. Jesus, shine your light on whatever you want me to see today. Help me to focus on you and your revelation Amen. Brothers and sisters, the verses of Psalm 15, which we have today, are the answer to the question posed in the responsorial verse. That is, who shall dwell on your holy mountain alone? The psalm raises good actions to the level of being signs of our having a good relationship with God and being able to walk on God's holy mountain. A reference not only to worshipping in Jerusalem, but also at least in the Christian understanding in heaven. The virtues which good person should practice are justice, 
truthfulness honesty and fairness all of these deal with how one should treat others let's pray that some keeping these thoughts in mind your response who shall dwell on your holy mountain o lord who shall dwell on your holy mountain o lord whoever walks without fault who does what is just and speaks the truth from his heart whoever does not slander with his tongue who shall dwell on your holy mountain o lord who does no wrong to a neighbor who cast no slur on a friend who looks with scorn on the wicked but honors those who fear the lord who shall dwell on your holy mountain o lord who lends no money at interest and accepts no bribes against the innocent such a one shall never be shaken who shall dwell on your holy mountain o lord glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen brothers and sisters pray for god's blessing now may almighty god bless you the father and the son and the holy spirit amen we remember today all those who are celebrating their birthdays especially father ryan pinto kamalite alexander from hassan ivan disusa from mira road mumbai sister clancy kamalite amita disusa from kembannu udupi navomi dikunna from bengaluru jian marissa disusa from ashoknagar urwa mangalore wish you all a happy birthday god bless you we also pray for the departed soul of charles desa from kuwait iron disusa from bandra mumbai mary gracy disusa from mira road mumbai mark mendonsa from mudbelle udupi may the lord grant them eternal rest that's all for today my dear friends have a great day and a week ahead see you tomorrow bye bye